everything around us has moisture. The air has moisture. We emit moisture from our bodies. There's just there's moisture everywhere. The Earth's relative humidity averages like 80%. There's moisture everywhere. Almost all materials have some moisture storage function. Now, there's a few materials like glass or aluminum that really won't, but most materials have a moisture storage function, which means that it can absorb molecules of moisture into that and then it will release it when there's less absolute moisture around it. It'll, it wants, everything wants to be in equilibrium. So when we look at a building, we want to look at it and make sure that, you know, whatever the drying potential is for the building, that drying potential is not exceeded by the wetting potential. Because when it is, you end up, over time, we build moisture within the assemblies and we end up with pretty spectacular failures. When we start getting that type of thing, we can see mold, fungus, and decay. We do stupid stuff, we pay the price. We want to look at those building assemblies over time. When we build a building initially, there is an embodied moisture content within that building that is going to be higher than the long-term moisture within that building. It's the nature of construction. Everything we put into the building is wet. We're putting in concrete, we're putting in drywall compound. We're putting adhesives on floors. We're putting wet wood in there. All this stuff that we put into a building makes the building initially wetter than it's going to be over the long term. And so when we analyze a building, we want to look at it over the course of years. This one's looked at over three years. And what we want to do is look at the drying potential. Like here, uh-oh, this moisture here is over 20%. But guess what? It dries out to tw uh, 13. Then it goes up again. Then it goes down again and up again. And what we're looking at is the trend line. So over the course of years, this moisture content is going down.